Hi everyone, uh, thank you for joining us here today. This is our probably 71st online meetup event on online meetup group. And today's event is probably on the very popular topic, DataView. I like myself is a developer, so I know how I use DataView and where all I need DataView. So I'm so much excited for that. So we will see on that. Before that, few housekeeping uh, things we will do meetup updates and then we'll move on to the session for those who have not joined our meetup earlier or not seen the organizers what you see seeing on the screen are our organizers it's me who does the um, epac and angel who handles the emia uh, in there and sandeep and me are handling the amir for this group so here we are housekeeping the recording of this event should be available within 24 hours. If you miss this event or if you want to look it back uh, for this one, you can always head back to the same event page and you should see a recording on there. So don't worry about it if you have to drop or if you miss on anything. For Q&A on the uh, platform on the right hand side next to chat, you see a Q&A section. Please add your questions in that section in chat it gets a little chatty and we might lose the track of the questions and all that right so please add your questions in the q and a sections and we will go through them as 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 quickly as we can um mariano and martin probably have some dedicated sections throughout the uh, their presentation for handling q and a related to that sections so please try to add related questions during that presentation and we will get back get to them as soon as we can social media it is important please share and um, spread the word about the group so we can spread our knowledge and content to more people importantly after the event our feedback survey should come out if you have five minutes please feel free to submit that one that does help us to plan the next events and it helps us to understand how we are doing and what you need from us more. With that, these are our two speakers, Mariano and Martin. Uh, Mariano and Martin, do you want to introduce yourself here? Okay, I will start. Mariano. Hey, my name is Mariano. I've been in Muso for uh, 10 years uh, since the beginning of DataWeb and been the architect and main developer for several years. Now the team is much bigger with Martin and several others yeah. that are doing the real work right now. <laughs> okay, so my turn. My name is Martin. Uh, hey, everyone. So I've been uh, working here at Millsoft for seven and a half years now. Uh, I've been before on the AnyPoint Studio team, and now it's been almost a year since I've been here with the AWIC team. So that's pretty much my my story here. <laughs> nice. Uh, thank, thank you, Martin, uh, Mariano. Sandeep, you want to add anything on your side? Actually, no, I'm excited for the topic. You know, Visual Studio ID, uh, I've been using it for a long time and look, seeing DataV plugin for that uh, IDE, I'm quite excited yeah. and, and looking forward to this session. So yeah, let's kick it off. Yeah, I think that's all the updates I have. This thank you is not from the presentation, it's just my introduction part of it. So <laughs> Martin Mariano, please take it on and continue. I'll stop my screen share uh, so one of you can share. Okay, I will start. Yep. So it will be very fast, my part. Uh, I'm mostly going to do an introduction of why we build, what we build, and what is covering. So first, this legal thing that we need to put, don't make any purchase or decisions based on what we're to show. Uh, the rules is what Manik said, we're going to divide the demo into sections and uh, after each section is going to be uh, 
uh, small wait for any questions uh, for us, or you can use the Q&A section. Uh, please limit your questions to what is being presented. And if we have time after the entire demo, we will be more than helpful and willing to solve any mapping or the, the private problems on the map. Uh, but please limit the questions. So, uh, the software development life cycle in DataWeb, it used to be something that was very lack and very unmature. Like people could only develop their mappings or modules in studio or in the playground. Uh, and there was no way to test it, to share across uh, other teams or the organization, needed to document and have a like using exchange to publish. Uh, so lack of testing, lack of deploy, and uh, lack of maintainability. So our tools weren't that great. So the idea with this development is not just that we added a Visual Studio Code plugin, we covered the entire development life cycle because as Martin is gonna show, we introduced a new VS Code plugin that we are trying to aim for people to stop using the playground for developing and start using this tool. A testing framework that is gonna allow you to test either your mapping or your uh, modules in a standalone way without requiring you to use MUnit or Flow or anything new related. Uh, to be able to deploy it and share all these assets into Exchange with documentation and their uh, searchable and people can reuse it and uh, use it in your studio projects. And we added the most requested feature that is a data with debugger. So you will be able to troubleshoot your scripts or your mappings uh, using the tool and understand what's, what's wrong, what's going on, and that's it. So that's it. That's my part. Uh, this is the demo time, and I'm going to send it to Martin that is going to show us the real things. Okay, so let's start. So the idea here is that we are going to tackle a real world problem. Uh, we are going to base uh, what we are doing um, on a question from uh, the Stack Overflow. So the idea is that we we are going to show the features that we added while we are developing uh, a real uh, library, right? So let me introduce you first to what we uh, we are going to solve. Uh, so here I have the transcript of the problem. I don't know if uh, that's okay. You can read well. Okay. So basically the problem is that uh, yeah, I can zoom in a little bit. How old now? Is it better? I don't know if you can. Yeah, okay. yeah, it, it looks it looks better now. Okay, so basically, uh, we have an input data of several date times, right? And what we want to achieve is to group them uh, by the ones that are one hour apart, right? So, for example, uh, this date this date this one and the other should be in one group this date and this one and also this one should be in another group and the rest should be on a third group right and uh we are expecting something like this in which we have the three groups right uh represented by an object we um where we get the date the starting date and the end date. Okay, so this is what we are going to start building. Uh, so now we're going to go to the VS Code plugin. Uh, let me see if I can uh, zoom in a little bit. I think that looks better. Um, okay, so first of all, well, you can look for our extension here. So if you go to preferences, extension, you can look for data weave. So you're going to have, uh, you're uh, going to find the extension. You can install it. I have already here because I'm on my local environment. So what we're going to do first, we're going to create 
our new project, right? So here in VS Code, uh, the main entry point to do things uh, are comments, right? So we have a comment palette here that you can access via view comment palette. And we have here uh, a lot of comments that are contributed by different, uh, different plugins. So we have the, the ones that we contribute here and we have the create new library project, right? So I'm going to click that. It's going to ask for several uh, information. So for example, the group ID and everything this, I'm going to put meetup daytime library. So it's going to be the one that's your serious snapshot and I'm going to do the same uh, name. So now I can choose the path, which is going to be fine. And then I'm going to open this new project that I have created, right? So let's see now a little bit of the structure of our project. Basically, the library is a Maven project. So that's why we have a POM file, which is already configured for you. You don't have to do anything uh, with this. Uh, we have all the dependencies right there your core data with functions. Um, then let's talk a little bit about the structure. So we have a main and a test folder. Uh, basically, this division, everything that is on the main uh, part of your library is what's, what is going to be shared once you publish it. And it's going to be accessible and reusable from Exchange, for example. And then on the test, you will have all the files that will help you make sure that your library is working correctly, right? So at first, you will see that our project has two files. Uh, one is a module and the other is the mapping, right? So as we want to start working with uh, our, our problem, we are going to start by doing a mapping, which would be something similar as we would do with the playground routes, right? So you would open the playground, uh, add that uh, sample data that you have and start working on your script do you have uh, an output that you feel comfortable with so i'm going to go with uh, to my mapping here what we well we have a comment here that this is not going to be shared and we have here like the uh, an import to the hello world function from from my module here and here is where all my functions are going to live uh, right now this we, we don't care about this so much uh, so we're going to remove this for now we're gonna use this and here you can see for example that i have uh, the play button which basically mimics uh the same behavior that you have on the playground routes right so uh i'm running a preview so i can see what my um my script is outputting right so now that we have our um our our script we can start working on solving the real world problem uh i don't know if there are questions so far uh this is just the scaffolding part of the of the project and we can start uh so okay i'm going to move on yes, so here on our editor yep sorry uh, no, no question. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So here I'm on my my mapping, and first of all, I need to define like the sample data that I'm going to use in order to start working with with my script. So here we can see these are what VS Code, what in VS Code are are called code lenses, which basically are embedded links inside your document that you can press and generate actions so here we have the defined sample data right so i'm going to press this and it's going to ask for uh, a name i'm going to leave the payload.json here so we as a placeholder are generating uh, this object with a message field and a hello world so now uh, you will see that if i go back to my mapping for example and i hit the auto completion I will have the payload right there, right? So I can see the payload. I can see also the type of my payload. So you can see that this is a, an object that has a message, which is in a string. So I can, for example, do this 
and access the message. And I will run my preview and this will be uh, printed out, right? So now that we have everything in place, I'm going to just give the payload. And I'm going to go into my payload JSON and I'm going to use the input data that I showed previously. So we can start working on this exercise, right? So I'm going to paste this. Now I'm going to my mapping, going to run the preview and you will see that I have uh, my data right there. Uh, so let's start by thinking a little bit, how can we solve this problem, right? So uh, what I wanted to do, we know that this list of daytimes are ordered, right? So we want to group them by uh, the ones that are one hour apart, right? So as we previously said. So essentially what we are going to do is that we are going to compare each uh, of the members of this uh, of this array with the previous one to see if they are one hour apart or not. If they are one hour apart, that means that they belong to the same group. And if they are not, that means that we need to create a new group with the uh, one that we are trying to compare, right? So let's start by having our payload. I'm going to hit the auto completion. So we are going to have to uh, go all over our array. So basically what I'm going to do is going to use um, recursion for this. So first I want to use here uh, a match, which is going to help me deconstruct the array. So I can type enter there and it will uh, autocomplete this uh, for me. So I have these two cases, right? So in the case that the array is empty, I don't, I don't care that much. So I'm going to uh, return the empty array. And now we need to see what we're going to do having like the first element and the rest, right? So this is the head of the array and this is the tail, basically the head if we are looking at the first iteration of this, it's going to be this element and the tail is going to be the rest of the elements. Uh, so let's go back one second to the problem. So basically we want to achieve something like this, but first what we're going to do is to obtain our groups of daytimes together, right? So we would want to uh, be able, able to have something like this where we have an array of arrays so basically each of these array is one group so you can see here that these are the ones that have one hour apart these are is the second group and this is the third the third so we're going to try to uh, replicate this structure with our code and then we're gonna uh, see how we can uh, really output the objects right so what we are doing now is we have the head and the tail of the array. So we want to call a helper function that will essentially help us then do the recursive call and go through the entire array, right? So I'm going to call this function, let's say group, uh, not group by, maybe cluster um, while one hour apart. Let's call it like that. We will change it later. So I'm going to want to send this the first element for now that is going to be the X. So if we see here in our example, it would be this one. Then I'm going to send the rest of the array for this. And the other thing that I need is an accumulator where I'm going to go and save the structure that I want to output on the end, right? So if we think a little bit, we are on the first step of our iteration here. So we have the first date, right? So we cannot compare the first date with anything because it's the first one in the array. So we know that almost certainly this one will form a new group, right? So the accumulator will be having to start with uh, an array with the first group and the X inside that group, right? So I have my function here, so you see that 
it doesn't exist, but I can use a quick fix and this will create the function for me, right? So I'm going to put it right there and I'm going to change some of the parameters name. So the starting date, this one is going to be the elements that I want to go, let me put this a little bit bigger so it doesn't, okay. And then this is going to be our accumulator, right? So uh, now that we have this, we need to see how we are going to keep going through our structure and form the new the new array, right? So here I'm going to use again our match function, which is going to deconstruct our array. So basically, we have again the two cases. So if the array is empty, what I'm going to do that means that I'm finished uh, like going through the race. So this is going to be uh, our accumulator, right? I have to return my accumulator. So now if there is one element on the array, now I have to do the comparison, right? Because I have my starting date and now I have the first element of the array. So basically I have to do a comparison here. So I'm gonna use an, uh, an if here. So I can get the template right there. So basically what I want to check um, is whether the starting date, I can do like this as the daytime. I can use the subtraction here and I can subtract the other daytime and check whether this is a period of time of one hour, right? So for now, let's do like this. Uh, so basically, this is a comparison that we want to do if those two dates are exactly one hour apart. So let's see how we can deal with it, right? So we have, uh, let, let's go first by the easiest one, which is basically what happens if I do not, um, this condition does not, is not met, right? So if the condition is not met, the thing that I have to do is first, I need to call again my function because I have to continue uh, going through my array. So now we think a little bit, so my starting date is not gonna be this one, but rather the next on the array, the elements is going to be the excess. And here comes the interesting part, which is that our accumulator uh, needs to uh, we need to add a new group to the accumulator because we know that this x right here which could be for example let's say this one if we are in this part of the array does not belong to the same group as this one because it's not one hour apart right so what we are doing basically is getting the accumulator and adding one more group with only that head of the array for now, right? So this is the easy part. So now if we go through the, to the other, which is basically what happens when that condition is met. So for example, if we are dealing with the first situation and we have the starting date is this one uh, and the head of the elements that we see here, the X would be the second one when we compare the period, it's going to be one hour. So we need to grab the accumulator and find the group in which this is uh, present and we need to add the second date, right? So how can we do, do that? Okay, so we one thing that we are sure about is that we need to keep going through the race. So we have to call this function again. Uh, this is the same, the two first arguments, but the thing is what happens with the with this third one. So one thing that we can do here is we can use update here. So let's do this. And it it's generating me here where I can choose uh, what is the element of the accumulator that I want to update. So in this case, as we know, every group is ordered. Uh, we know that I want to add a new element to the last group, right? So I can use the 
minus one index, which will be the last element of my array. And I can get that uh, group. This I can see here, I can see the type, which is the array of strings. Essentially is my group, the one uh, to which I want to add this new element. And I'm going to add the X, right? So here I have my code. It seems that it's working. This of course is going to return a new accumulator with the value updated. And that's what this is going to receive afterwards, right? So let's go to here and uh, run my script. So when we see the output, this is a little bit different to what we expected because we wanted to see those, uh, those groups already formed. So it seems that even though the groups are not separated, all the data is right there. So we are not losing any of the date times, but it seems like our condition is, is somehow failing. So what we can do here in order to uh, try to troubleshoot, we can just put a breakpoint here and hit this code lens, which is the run mapping code lens. So essentially was what this is going to do is it's going to build our entire application and we can, uh, and it's going to run it and we can also uh, use the debugger to troubleshoot. So now it's compiling and now it's running. So now you see here, I put the breakpoint on my if because I somehow know that this is where my, my issue is because I'm not losing any of the daytimes. So here you can see, for example, every uh, piece of data that you have available to that point of the function. So you can see the starting date, you can see the X, the elements accumulator and the payload as well, right? So here, okay, I'm in the, in the first iteration of these functions. So I see that the starting date is the one that is at six and uh, my X here is one at seven. So this function, this uh, condition should be, should be true, right? So what I can do here is I'm going to copy this one and I'm going to paste right here on the debug console, right? So this is returning me false. So why is this returning false? So I'm going to go a little bit further and I want to execute this subtraction. So I see here that it is indeed one hour period, but it's negative. So the problem here that I'm seeing is that I have the dates the other way around. So that's why my condition is not met. So I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and skip this execution and go and change this starting date. And this is going to be the X. So now if I run the preview again, okay, that's much better, right? So we have our groups, the three groups that we were expecting so far. Uh, but there's something different with the output that we were expecting from the problem that I presented you, right? So let me show you again, refresh the memory a little bit the expected output. So, um, what is it? Okay, so basically the expected output here should be something in the form of this, where each of the groups is mapped into an object that has the starting date and the end date. So going back here, what we can do is that we could map this array of arrays. So I'm going to transform each of these arrays, which represents one group into an object, right? So I'm going to use a key from date. And uh, I know because these are all in order that what I want to use as a, as a starting date is the first one. So I'm using these and the, uh, I think it was two dates, right? Uh, two date needs to have the last one. So I'm gonna use the minus one index, which is the last element of your array. So now let's hit 
play again. And we can see that we reach our final solution. So this is what we were expecting. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna pause right here before I continue if you have any questions so far. There were a couple of questions which Mariana is just beating them. <laughs> so uh, as you are going through the okay. demo, Martin, there Mar Mariana is answering questions in the tab itself. So if we have to, if we have any question to be answered on live, we will we will add in here. Okay, awesome. Yep. Awesome. Thanks. So now we have our our mapping. It works. We know that uh, it's outputting what we want. So essentially, we want to start refactoring a little bit, right? So uh, we might think that this function that we uh, we are writing uh, right here, it could be used uh, reused by others on our company uh, because who wouldn't want to to group uh, date times that are one hour apart, right? So uh, what we're going to do uh, is that we are going to start refactoring a little bit this. But first, we want to make sure that whatever refactor we do to this uh, mapping, we want to make sure that we're not breaking anything, right? So one of the things that we added is that you can see right next to the play button, there's, a, there's this icon, which is the same as this, which is a testing. So we can press this right here. I'm going to, and it's going to ask for, uh, and a mapping test um, name, right? So the, this is one of the scenarios that we are going to test. I'm going to explain what is happening right here. So let me put basic daytime scenario, whatever. And basically what we added here is a way of um, basically capturing the input and the output that we were using to reach our final solution, which is like this one. We are taking a snapshot of that and we are, we are saving it and we are using as a baseline for our testing. So now we have this file uh, created here, which basically has uh, a new created test that is going to evaluate my mapping and use the input and the output uh, from the, the input and the output from what I was previously running, right? So if I go into my resources, I will see here these uh, basic daytime scenario uh, right here. And this is where I can see the input, which is basically this and the output. That is what I want to uh, test against, right? So let me see a little bit here. Okay, so uh, I think there's something that is not. So basically this test file is going to allow us to run these tests. Uh, I don't know why it's not indexing my file right now, but essentially what this is going to do is it's going to create a test file. Uh, sorry, a test case that you can run and see uh, how like our mapping is still uh, putting the same uh, that we wanted to, to output in the first place, right? So this right here, all the functions that you see here are uh, provided by I, our data with testing framework. So basically um, these, all these functions, you can write them and do your own testing. So now that we have our test in place here, uh, let me try once again, if this is going to index my tests. Okay, so what I'm going to do is gonna, I'm going to move on uh, to show you a little bit of refactoring here. So basically uh, right now we are, we are sure that our our mapping is outputting what we want. So we are going to uh, refactor this and send it to our module, right? So now we want to share this function and uh, we want 
that when we publish this asset is going to be available for others to consume, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to move this, uh, the entire function here. I'm going to first rename my module. So this is going to be meetup uh, daytime module here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this function and I'm going to take it right here. So now my function, if I just go and publish this asset, is going to basically, um, this function is going to be public, right? So now I go back to my mapping, I notice that this function does not exist. So luckily for me, there's a quick fix that is going to import this function for me. So now I'm almost sure that this is going to work. Um, so one thing, I don't know if you have questions so far. Uh, we're good? No, yeah, we are good. The questions are answered and, and um, Mariano are answering those. I don't see anything that is for uh, live yet. So, okay. Continue. So basically what we want is, yeah. So basically what we want here is to uh, start refactoring our function so we can make it uh, better for others to consume, right? So first of all, we can see that we have uh, here a condition, right? Which is basically that the dates are one hour apart, but this condition can be like extracted to a function uh, so we can like choose what is the condition that we want to use, right? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add uh, one more, one more uh, argument to this function, which basically is going to be a, a function that is going to receive two strings and is going to return a Boolean, right? So with this, what I'm going to do is to take this condition and I'm going to replace the one that I have here, right? So I'm going to call this condition with the starting date and with my X right here. So now what happens is that I change the, the um, signature of my function. So the recursive call start failing. The only thing that I need to do is to add a, my condition, right? As this, is, this function is going to be applied all over and over till we get to um, to the final element of the array. So I go back to my mapping here and I see that, okay, now that I made this condition, uh, I can pass this condition through a parameter. I need the condition again in order to um, like to make this function work. So the condition that I have is basically, I need to have a function that it's going to have the start date and the end date, right? And what we are doing is that we are going to do the start date again as daytime minus, sorry, the end date. If not, I'm going to repeat my previous bag. So the start date as daytime again, and I want to compare it to the period of one one hour right okay so now i can still play this and i will see that it will continue to uh, run smoothly and this is what we were expecting um one el one other thing that we can do with with this is that for example right now the signature of the function is a little bit weird right because we need for this uh to work to send the starting date the rest of the array of the elements accumulator and the condition. But uh, in reality, the only thing that we need is the entire array and the condition that we want uh, to group by, right? So if I go to my mapping, one thing that uh, I can do, I'm going to grab this, which is the first step of my function that I want to really share. And I can go and do this extract function. I'm going to call it, um, let's see, cluster while. 
and now I'm going to modify this a little bit because basically I don't want this to always be the payload. So I'm going to send this as a parameter. And this is going to be an array of string that are my elements, right? Sorry, uh, my array of strings that are, are my, my elements. And I want to also send the condition here. So again, in string and it's going to return a Boolean and that's my condition, right? So now again, I can grab this one that was previously here and have it right here and my condition is going to be this one. So now I extracted further this function uh, and this is, this looks like, this looks a lot better. And this is the one that I actually want to share, right? So what I can do again is I can get this one to my module. And this is the one that we are going to share. So I can, again, use this quick fix, which is going to add the other function for me. And now what I want to do is that uh, I don't want people to see this function. So basically I'm doing here, I'm using a do block. So I can here declare an inner function, which will be this one, right? So I'm going to copy paste this. And now uh, I think our function is ready. So one thing uh, that you can do here, of course, is maybe this name is not really representative anymore of the of what the function does. So we can go ahead and do a rename symbol here. And you can see that I can just rename this cluster wide again. And if we go back to our mapping, of course, this function doesn't work. The, uh, it's not present anymore. So I'm going to delete that. And once I hit play, I can still see again uh, my uh, my output. So now, okay, so we finally reach. I don't know if there are any questions. Uh, Martin, uh, Martin uh, sorry, not really the question, but I think there were a few times asked about the debugging part of it. Is it possible for you to show one more time, yep. like a, putting a breakpoint, debugging through? Basically? Yep. Sure. So let me run this. So that was one of the question. How do I put breakpoint? And I think it's as good as just clicking on that. Oh, on okay. Line, right. Yeah, exactly. So basically, to put breakpoints, you just go into your data we file, and you can just click on the left side of the line number, and it will just place a breakpoint there. And then you can just go ahead and run uh, your mapping, which again, it will uh, basically compile your project. And if we are lucky, this should. Okay, so now I'm here. Uh, the debug section, this is from VS Code, is this one, right? And you can see here all the information of my execution, even the call stack, right? So yeah. you can go through the call stack and see what are the calls that uh, were made until you reach the point of your uh, your breakpoint, right? You can see also as well the condition, the also all the function, the accumulator, the access, the elements, and your dates right here. And of course, you can move and do. Uh, you can step on your on your script and continue, right? So we can see how this is going to iterate all over the array. I don't know if that answers that's the question. Or is yeah, there, that definitely answers anything sure. else. Uh, the one can one you one show, can also use a, how, Can you show how to search? Sorry, for how to search Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. asked several times how to start. So, it. Okay, so you go into the here the call menu mm -hmm. on the preferences, or even you have this. I, I think this is one the section which is easy 
to access this extension here. And basically, this is going to search through all the extensions that are available on the VS Code marketplace. So we look for DataWave. Uh, here, if we can go, we can see our documentation, our page with documentation and everything. And you can just install it from here. Uh, yeah. Is that okay? <laughs> yep. uh, uh, one one more question on the structure part, right? Like you just yeah. ran the my mapping dot dwl, and the question is, you implemented that my mapping dot dwl under test folder, not under the main folder. Is there a particular reason for it, or it's just part of the testing and everything? Yeah. So as uh, the test is going to be under the test folder because we are not going to share that test. It's only to ensure that when we build our application, our, sorry, our data will library is going to run. Uh, so let me see if I can run this test. But the idea really, okay, so here it is. Uh, so the idea is that now I can show you this, which basically, when we created this test using this action right here, uh, it generates a file, like I, I said before, that is going to evaluate that mapping with the snapshot of the input and the output, right? So now if I go, for example, to this view right here, I can see this mapping, uh, this test, uh, and I can just go ahead and run it. So this is a way of doing a test on our mapping. So we can make sure that even though we are still playing around with the script and the mapping itself, we are sure that we are not breaking anything, right? So for example, um, now I did a, a lot of, uh, of changes to my script and to my module. So I want to make sure that my initial scenario that we previously shown uh is still working correctly so that's why we have this test it ensures that our mapping is still outputting what we want uh and a side note on that is that you can also see here on the explorer we have a data with a scenario view uh where you can see all the scenarios that we created right so basically now we have two the default scenario which is the one that we were using to play around and you see a bit like the playground, the data we play on. So you start playing around with the basic scenario. And once you are ready and you are you are sure that your output is the one that you are looking for, then you can save that as a test, which basically will create a snapshot. And this is the scenario that you're seeing here. So if I look for the payload, here is uh, the one that we wanted to transform. And the output is essentially what we were seeing in the preview. So with that frozen scenario, what we can do is that we can make sure that our mapping or even the dependencies of that mapping, in this case, I'm changing the module uh, in which that I have here, I'm changing this function a lot. So I can make sure that my mapping is still working, right? So, uh, I don't know if that answers the question or uh it it kind of does but it, it gets another question at least from me uh so when you created that default scenario into basic date time scenario is it like a copy yeah. of all that data in data and the input files into basic date time scenario and then i can go back to default it's, and yeah. then add different formats or the different inputs to create a different scenario for him is that yeah correct? exactly you can start playing around with this scenario and yeah. modify the input. And then once you are sure that you're getting the right output, you can create another test, right? Okay. So that, that's, a, that, that's the idea that you can create a lot of test scenarios and have a default scenario that you can use just to uh, play around and iterate your solution, right? Okay. Yeah, the metaphor is like, we, we, we try to capture what the playground is good for like people use the playground in order to play with your mapping with live data but the, the drawbacks with the playground is that you cannot store those uh, kind of input output as expected tests 
So if you change your input in order to test a new kind of uh, data, you lost your previous kind of test, you no know, light test. With this approach, what we're trying to push yeah. towards is people being able to create tests, all the boilerplate of creating a test, just by playing with your mapping, you can start kind of creating snapshots of that input and expected output and make sure with your changes, you don't break all your scenarios. It's been taking the best of the playground into here and allow mm -hmm. you to create tests while you play. Yeah, no, that's good because I know myself, I have saved, I used to save the inputs in the file <laughs> manually. So that's good. Thanks, Martin. Okay, so now that we are sure that our function is ready for to, to share, um, we can, like, we want to make this, uh, like, really um, rock solid, right? So we want to add a test as well for this function that we are, uh, we are developing inside our module, right? So if you see here, you will see a code lens that says to add a unit test. So I'm going to press that and it's going to automatically generate a test for these uh, function in the module, right? So this, this is the file that is going to, con to contain the test for my meetup data module. And I'm going to write tests for my cluster while function. Of course, you can change everything here and add something more descriptive. Um, and basically, uh, right now, what I'm going to do is to write a test for this cluster while uh, using the scenario that we we saw. I have this already uh, prepared, but because it there's no much value in coding this uh, live, I can just explain it. So I'm going to paste the dates. Basically, what I'm doing here is just getting the dates that I'm going to send to the function that I want to group. So this is, uh, these are the same dates that uh, I had previously. And I'm going to call the function with those dates and with the condition that I want to, uh, to use, right? Which is basically the same one that we had on our mapping. And I want to make sure that this is equal to uh, the date times uh, already uh, grouped, right? So I have this, which is the structure that we were uh, showing previously, where we have three groups of dates that are uh, already ordered and that each member of the group is one hour apart from the other. Um, so with that, I can create, again, a test on the module and particularly on this function, right? Um, and I can also run it as I did with my mapping test. So now that we have these uh, already there, one more thing that we can do to refactor this function, if we take a look at what we have uh, written right here, uh, we can see that we're not using anything uh, really related to uh, a string, right? Because what what we need, uh, I mean, where we need to know that this is a string is just in the condition. So we see that these types are the same. Uh, so essentially, my question is, can we make this function work for other uh, other types that are not an array? If you take a look at the code, we are not using anything from the strings, but rather uh, everything is from the from the array type, right? We are just creating new arrays, appending things to arrays, and deconstructing arrays. So in reality, I don't care about the type of the array that I'm using, right? Or or even this. So what I can do is use the type parameter t. So now this is a generic function. And we can replace everywhere where we have the, the array just to use our t. Right. So now what I did here is that I have my function uh, prepared to work with any kind of array. Uh, so it doesn't have to be an array of 
strings, uh, but we need to make sure that the condition handles members of that array, right? So now another thing that I wanted to show is that uh, here I have another test written. Let me show you right here, which basically let's say that I want to group again, I'm trying to copy the same use case, but now the dates are not the strings, but rather there is a collection of transactions, which basically is an object that has a date and an ID. And I want to cluster them and group them uh, with the same um, criteria, which is basically that this date inside my object uh, is one hour apart from the other. So essentially I declare an array of transaction that has a subset of the others. So it's easier to read, but we have several dates with different IDs. I don't care about the ID, it's just for the, for the demo. So now I can call my cluster Y function with this array of transactions and with the condition that receives two transactions. And you can see here that my transaction, I can do dot and it will auto complete uh, these the, the fields of this object. So I know that I want to compare the dates of the end transaction and the start transaction. So basically I'm doing this function. Um, I'm able to transform this function so we can work with any type of array. So now I'm really ready to publish my module because I'm sure that this is going to help uh, a lot of other um, use cases, right? So one thing that we also added here is another code lens because we want to say, okay, my function is ready, but we want people to know what it's doing and we need to have some sort of documentation. So here you can uh, click on the generate data with documentation lens, which basically is going to scaffold all the documentation of that function for us. And we can start uh, describing our function, uh, having a table with parameters here and write even an example of how this function works. Uh, if you see, for example, if we go back to the mapping where this function is being used and I do a hover, now I will see the documentation of that function right there. So I can see the parameters and the example. This is also gonna be important now because we're gonna, when we're going to publish this to exchange, we're gonna see this information as well. Uh, I'm gonna pause here before we move on to the publishing part. I don't know if there are any other questions. There were a few questions which were answered, but I think one question, maybe it's worth to uh, repeat it here about the data view versions that are supported by this um, UID. Is it in the Android said it's latest? Do you want to talk about like what versions we can support right now? Sorry, Mani. Yeah. Can, the, can you repeat? The question is, Sorry, I lost it. What what versions are supported? Uh, what runtime versions? So the recommended version is oh. of a two four of DataWeb. It's taken from the POM. If you can open the POM file. Uh, yeah. Let me show it. The so everything, the, the testing framework, uh, the runtime that is used in the preview, all is being whatever you put in the POM file, uh, so that we don't need to ship a new plugin every time we release a new version. It just needs to update here. Uh, we recommend using the latest one with the latest patches because we have been fixing some issues, especially with the debugger and some tooling services. Uh, that's why we, we strongly recommend using the latest 240. The, Previous older ones, like the one that is 2.3 that correspond to Mule 4.3, is not recommended at all. It may work, but you might find issues. Uh, so the recommended okay. version is the latest 2.4. Okay, thanks. And is, is it, um, so if I 
because I know there are people who are on 4.3, maybe people on 4.3. So if, if, if they use it, or if I use that for 4.3, and if I see issues, is there a way to report that or get anything for it? Any 4.3? Yeah, we we'll recommend. I, I, so any, also any issues that I see some people uh, asking in the Q&A, any issues, if you have a way to reproduce it, please report it into a link I want to paste. I don't know if I already put in general, that is Muse of Labs, Labs GitHub repo, Muse of Labs slash data web language server. I would paste it again. I don't know if I already did it. I, I know I answered. Yeah, you, you did. Yes, I put it in there. Uh, please report it into there. Uh, we will happily answer and try to, to fix your issue but uh, that's it like because i see a lot of people saying i i, I don't know uh, is if have we tested in windows yes we have tested in windows we have a ci on mm -hmm. windows also using github actions but there are maybe issues with windows we we know we found a lot of issues with windows initially and we try to squash them all but if you have a way to please, please report there with maybe the project or something that help us reproduce it and we will try to fix it. Yeah. That sounds good. Thanks. Also Maria. take into account, as it says in the name of the extension, that is still in beta. So uh, supportability of this is, is still not there. Uh, we are still in a beta state of the, of the plugin. So uh, we still are in, in, in that, in that that face yeah okay that's helpful thank you hey marianne oh. also, so there was a question uh if we can report the issues to the mule support team uh probably not right in the beta phase no not support team uh for the community or anybody outside news of the place is the data with that that url i paste i promise we on uh but uh, there is no sla for this one okay okay yeah thanks okay so let me do this so basically as i said previously we have the the cluster wide function we created our documentation so basically uh we are ready to publish this onto exchange right so here, what we've done is that on our scaf uh, scaffolding of the POM file, uh, you can see that there are some sections that we have commented here with a guide on how to uh, publish this. So we have our distribution management here. We can just uncomment, uh, and I need my organization ID from Exchange in order to publish this. So let me use that one. Then, of course, the repository, I'm pointing again to Exchange using this ID. And of course, for deploying to Exchange, I need to change as well my group ID using my all ID, which is, the, here is the uh, comment explaining a little bit how to do this, right? So uh, now we are really ready to deploy. So we have here, let me show you something in the POM file, which is basically we have um, our own data we may plugin, which will help you with the publication and everything uh, to exchange. So it should be uh, pretty easy to, to publish. So what we're going to do is that we're going to open a new terminal here on the root of the project. Once it's, it loads, I'm going to just hit Maven in deploy. This basically is going to uh, package my library, going to run my tests. So as you see there, it's going to generate all the, uh, the documentation and the pages that we are going to see in a minute in exchange. And this is all done by our own Maven plugin. Uh,
I don't know if there are questions while this is uploading. Also take into account that all the uh, tests are going to be run. This is, this is... So uh, that we, that the, there's a, mo a module that also that Martin created. Uh, so, and also it's going to validate that all the scripts that you have are syntactically correct. So we are not only uh, testing and deployment plugins for Maven, but also compilers and warnings that will currently the compiler, I'm pulling to code because we don't compile to nothing, but we will, it's more like a linter where we will parse your mappings and check uh, that are syntactically valid and some warnings may appear. So here you can see what Marino was saying about the test being run. You also generate the test report. And here, let's go to the end. The publication is complete. So everything went smoothly and I can check my asset here. So let me show you the asset that I have just published. Sorry, I need to log in first. Also, cold coverage has been included in the testing uh, phase. Uh, so if you have like coverage uh, requirements in your company, you can now verify that your tests cover X amount of lines of code. Okay, so now you can see here in exchange, uh, I just use the link that the, the uh, maybe a plugin provided there that, that the execution provided. So I'm right now looking at my library. So you can see here, I have uh, the modules that I have here on my library, which is only one by now, which is a meetup data module. And I can go inside here and I will have my, uh, my function right here with the documentation that I have uh, generated on the uh, on the other side, right? So we have also the example that you can fill out and you can uh, see, you will be able to see it right here uh, once you publish your module. Uh, so I think that's it for the publication part. So now, I don't know if there are any other questions. I'm going to grab these you can go here to the dependency snippets and you can grab this Maven dependency snippet here. You can copy it and I'm going to show you how to consume it. Um, so basically what we are going to do, I'm going to create a quick new project just for the sake of the demo and I'm going to create it right here. And I'm going to show you something else. So basically we can go to the to our POM, POM file as we are consuming uh, this library from Exchange. We need to go into our repositories, right? And, and comment this so we can consume it. Remember one thing that I haven't uh, shown that you need to do is to uh, set your credentials on your settings XML from Maven, so it can resolve your uh, private assets. So now that I have this here, I can go ahead and grab the dependency snippet that we saw, and I can add my dependency. So this is gonna index once I open my, let's open my mapping here. So now I can open my dependencies. This is something that I haven't shown previously, which is we have uh, an, a different view here in the Explorer, which shows all the dependencies that are there. And I can see the one that I just deployed and I can also navigate to the data with uh, code, right? So I can see my function right here. And of course I can go into my mapping and call the, class to while function and I can get 
the import from my fix here. And of course, I have to complete with all the data that is needed. Uh, so, of course, you can navigate. Um, let me show you something else. You can, of course, navigate through here and see the code. This is right. It's also available for functions that are inside the data with core. And uh, so, if we're using, I don't know, my object, I can do a hover and I can see the documentation of this function, the example, and I can also navigate to it. You can see here that this is the uh, VS Code has something to pick the definition. So I can, right now that there are two map object definition in, on DataWeave, I can see both of them. And then I can go ahead and double click and it will navigate to this code that essentially I cannot see it inside my project because it's one of my dependencies that I have here, right? So yes, I think with that, uh, I think we are done with the with the demo. I don't know if there are further questions or we can answer. No, I think Mariano and team tackled all the questions there. So, <laughs> so there was one question, uh, Manika. So ahead, can please. you call the module functions from Java project, Martin? Can can you? Sorry, call? you can get. Yeah. Can you no, call you cannot. The data? No, you cannot. So, okay. calling data with from Java is something that still not supported. Uh, one thing that also I want to mention is that the same thing that Martin did for reusing a module inside another module, you can do the same thing in your new lab and apply it. And Studio will auto complete your functions and have the same functionality in your mappings or any part. Uh, obviously for time reasons we have we are also planning to keep on investing in studio for doing this interaction between the two places better uh, but uh, for now uh, you need to go paste the the snippet in your form in your new application studio uh, studio will consume that jar put it in your class path and then the ID in studio will complete navigate and all the functionality Martins is shown in Visual Studio Code. Same thing is going to happen in your clips uh, new studio. Yeah. Uh, while, while we wait for the more question, Martin, I know this question came up a few times, like how do I create the project or how do I get to the template of that project? Uh, is it is it possible to quickly create a new project of the library and show how you created that first thing maybe for the people who joined few yep. minutes late and missed that initial part yeah sure so basically the entry point for interactions here in vs code are comments right so you have two options here you can go into your view section and there's a comment palette uh, which you can also use a shortcut here. And when you get to this comment palette, you can see all these comments that some of those are uh, contributed by us, by our plugin. And you, you will see other, uh, other comments that are from another plugins. So the one that we are interested in is a great new library project comment. So we press this and we are going to have uh, five steps to create our project. Uh, so we need to fill out the organization ID. Uh, I'm gonna do example two. So the version that we are going to use for our own uh, asset, the name, and finally the location, right? So here you can uh, use this and uh, choose where you want to, to create this. I'm going to create this here and it's going to appear the path right there and then if i confirm basically here it offers you to open this project in a new window or not i can just open it here so i'm going to press no and then i'm going to have my project which has the structure that we were seeing at the start right we have my 
the mapping and we have a module here that you can iterate on. So, yeah. Thanks, Martin. Yeah, that's that's helpful, like a quick, uh, quick overview of how to get started. So the question I see there just now popping is, is it possible to generate documentation in exchange from the DW documentation in the comments? Not in the comments, but so, it, it, it generates documentation in the in a page, no, in an exchange page. So each module will have yeah. its own page and you will see a table of content uh, page where you have all your modules like yeah but and it doesn't put anything on the comments yeah okay oh, yeah oh, i maybe. don't know if uh go ahead, go ahead, please. no uh, yeah like the the page that um we shown on the on on the exchange site is based on the documentation that we have here so, yeah. Okay. Okay. If that, that, that is the comment uh, that is referenced in the question, probably yes. So, yeah, that, that answered the question. Yes, it is from the comment. Thank you. For yeah. more detailed examples, we have published, I think, four or five uh, uh, data with libraries in the public exchange that those will point there's a link in those uh, assets to the github repo with everything that you need to see uh, like the and they're very interesting libraries one for slack one for uh, uh, json web token and others but in there you, you can see all the examples of everything you can do such as how to enrich your documentation with extra information how to generate tests that are like uh, very well structured and implemented examples of how to do a data library with GitHub actions integrated. Everything is already set in those examples for you to copy those and use this as your bootstrap of how to do uh, how to do it in a proper way. The entire software development life cycle. That, I think that that sounds interesting. Uh, Martin, Anna is asking if you could show again how to generate the documentation. You to show that? Yep. So let me see. Yeah, I can show you with this function, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. I have, sorry, I did it a little bit quick. Uh, or let me better remove this and we can just generate it again. So basically you see the function signature here, right? So right there on top of the signature, we have two code lenses, one to add unit tests to this function and the other one is to generate data with documentation. So basically when you click on this code lens, it's going to generate uh, a base template of that documentation with already the parameters of your function and you can write further documentation of, of it here. Uh, and then that is what you're going to see when you are using that uh, that function, right? So here, if I do the hover, I can see that documentation that I just generated. And when we publish this to Exchange, this is the document documentation that will go on the Exchange page, right? Yeah, exactly. The, this documentation that you see here, I can show it to you. Let me. Yeah, so what we see here for our function, so I can do the casual function here. What we see, this is because I haven't changed anything, but this table right here that you see with the parameters and example is the same one that you get when you are, for example, hovering here because it's the same documentation, right? Yeah. That's really nice. So more questions, guys? Girls, let's see. Uh, not seeing any new question. If, if, if we have missed any question, 
from anyone please uh, add that back in there sorry about that a lot of things a lot of discussion happened between qa and the general tab so it's, it's easy to lose them uh, let me see there are a few questions coming in in case we don't have the need to create an entirely separate library but we want to have some unit tests of a complex transformation that we are using in our mural project is there a way to include these tests in a standard mural project that's a good question actually <clears throat> So the, the, the testing plugin for Maven is basically a Mojo. So if you set up the Mojo already, we tested. We still haven't documented that because we it's, it's still under uh, development. But we did a local test for that use case where we put the Maven plugin for data we're testing inside a, a new lab and it did work correctly. Uh, we still haven't documented that i will still will wait for that if you want to use it in production if you want to use it for like start testing it out and see if you can do it go ahead and um, if you have any issues please report the issue if it's going to be in a production environment i will wait until we document it properly and squash any issue okay Thanks, Mariano. Answered or... uh, one more. Uh, I think so. Yes, as a oh, yeah, let me, can you automate yes. documentation? Yeah. There's a question saying, can you, can you automate documentation at the project level as opposed to the function level? Yes, as I said, was mentioned, there is a way to put documentation on the main page, like the, our examples. Uh, the ones I, I sent has uh, shown this feature, this capability. It's basically adding a markdown and, uh, in your root project and uh, linking that markdown in your uh, mojo, in your uh, Maven plugin, and that will populate the main page on your asset. Uh, you will see also you can customize the icon that you have in the asset. You have, that's why, again, uh, this is not a way to increase all the features. Uh, if you go and look at these examples, we, those examples are very complete with all these customizations that we allowed uh, being shown and exposed how to do it. The icons, how to document the top level, how to enrich, how to add links. Uh, everything is set up in those examples. Yeah, that's true. And I think that whatever we have seen today here on the demonstration and the features, that definitely puts us in the direction of going there and explore more. So I would say, yeah. Yeah, there are plenty of things that haven't been shown, like fun usages, more quick fixes, uh, refactors. Yeah. There are a lot of features in the IDE that we put. Uh, please go and hand play it. We have a basic documentation we are still working on that one that shows case the most common use cases auto completion and think that one will, will expect to have but there are more things i think people are going to be very happy with those uh, but let's go ahead and try it out and again any issue please go and report it this is still in beta so we are asking for help in order for us to build a greater product here yeah no that's true uh probably one last question i see there um let's assume that i'm using this function in my project and there's a bug in that needs to be fixed what are the steps to fix the function so the api works again i don't I'm, know to what api if, and i if the, the, the leandro is uh, pointing out to the mm, assets we already published those assets are public so you can report an issue in the github repo uh, of the corresponding project uh, again those will be attended and released in your version uh, if i don't know if this person is related to that if not 
maybe a clarification on what the API means or is asking for. Yeah, no, that's true. I think um, it, it, there could be variations to it. Is it the function that is created by me and I am using in my API versus the library that you pointed on the exchange that is being used and there are issues with it. So there are multiple variations. Yeah, if it's your private your private library, then you can release a new version as anything in exchange. This yeah. version and then your your consumers can upgrade to the latest version. Again, I yeah. I don't have a clear answer because I don't I think that would understand the question. Yeah, I think if it is my own library, I would um, presume it it will just follow the regular Maven life cycle. If I have released 1.0.0, I will fix bug and release 1.0.1 and have my consumers to update their versions uh, in the dependency. Yeah. Yeah, so we are three minutes short, uh, two minutes actually, clock just flipped. So I think we can take a break here. I do want to thank you, Mariano, Martin, and I and whole deep data view team that also help in the back end to answer so many questions. In the Q&A tab, looks like the Q&A tab was more active than our general ch chat today. So a <laughs> lot of activity happened. Thank you very much, everyone. And I hope you all have enjoyed this one. Just a, a reminder, you will have this recording available back on our event page, usually within 24 hours. So you can go back and take a look at it. Uh, Mariano, Martin, Sandeep, anything you want to add last? No, I think this was a great session. Thank you, Mariano and Martin, for taking some time to explain this to the community. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, to to join and like start using. And we, we want to get feedback. So yes. great. this is great. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Thank uh, you all. Please be patient with your communication. Uh, yeah. Good. Good, Mariano. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks, Maria. Thank thanks, everyone. Marco. I'll just wait here for the recording. Will be posted. Recording is posted on the YouTube channel as well as the meetup page where you signed up for uh, the event. Uh, so just keep an eye out. It will be available within 24 hours. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.